Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Pacers Gaming Podcast presented by Salesforce. Salesforce, one of our partners uh, for Pacers Gaming. You can find a link to their website and potential career opportunities even in the description below. Another flair to this podcast. I feel like every episode we're trying to come up with some different things to, to, to try to make it a little bit different. We've got, uh, we've got what, five of the guys here. We've got Nate, Bobby, Swizz, Jomar, Ohio, myself, Spencer. Wolf's missing today. Missing in action, you guys. Uh-oh. See, he's helping his girlfriend move, I think, isn't he? Something like that? Something like that. This weekend? Yeah. Right there. yeah, I think so. Something like that? Something like that. All right, so here's the deal. Six months ago, we asked all of you what kind of myths and assumptions you had about the 2K League you all replied and we haven't done anything with that. So we'll be answering some of those in this uh, podcast. And also we've got a link out for Academy members. We may have some random members join us, you guys. So if you know, you can be a member of our channel. It's kind of like being a sub on Twitch. You get special perks. All those perks are listed when you hit the join button below this video or on our channel page and the Academy level members have the opportunity for a little private webinar with us. So they may join. We may ask some things, you know, about them. They may ask questions of us. They may just join in to the conversation that we have. So, or nobody will, <laughs> potentially nobody will join. I'm not sure. It could just be us. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. How about we get started with a couple of questions? I'll send out the link and then we'll see how this thing rolls forward. All right, you guys. So first off on YouTube, Domeo asked us, once again, six months ago, um, he's he's kind of assuming that everybody will be using the same archetype and lineup and running the same offenses this year, uh, more of a testament to the game than the actual players. Since we're already six months past this, what can you guys talk about um, with the la- with the way the league has gone with archetypes, lineups, and things like that? Everyone pretty much runs the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Pretty accurate. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, I think it's pretty similar. I mean, I think we were one of the one of the few teams that ran something completely different for a little bit when we kind of ran a double lock lineup and you know got some early wins out of it. But for the most part, like we've seen, everyone use the same center build almost all year. Um, PGs is pretty much the same, maybe two or three that barely it used. Right. And then um, other than that, a couple builds that are like switch. Comp- Shooting guard, small forward kind of. Yeah, some teams run a slasher or sharp, uh, shot sharp, and other teams run a pure sharp. But And every team runs a lock. It might just be a different type of lock. But it's pretty much similar. Everyone runs glass cleaner too at the four now. So, yeah, it's pretty similar. Do you feel like we've been the most like uh, varied in our lineups? In the league, yeah. do you think who do you think in the league has has probably had the most like us, play probably. styles, etc.? Yeah, probably yeah, us. Probably us. Probably us. I think if you could, yeah, or, or, the, King, or the Kings, yeah, yeah or the Kings. Because I, I remember they brought out a popper week one. Yeah, if you probably had a uh, a statistic on on how many lineup changes each team has done, I'm sure Harris Rubenstein from the league could do something <laughs> like that. But uh, I think we're probably top two for sure, and not two. So. <laughs> yeah we're we're up there where are we at now do you feel like uh we're locked in for the rest of the season yeah we went hopefully. back to our day one yeah we went back to our day one and and we're rolling with that so is yeah. it meta is what we're doing like the yeah. Meta? yeah yeah yes meta? yes yes yeah uh jaylen also from youtube actually all these are from youtube so i'll stop mm-hmm. saying that jaylen <laughs> he's he's saying isn't it all just two three and five out Probably two three. Yeah, two three. Uh, n- nah, it's meant to man. Well, yeah, it, it looks like a two three because of the spacing on offense. Because yeah, there's yeah, two right. people in the corner and there's a center and a point guard running pick and roll. Yeah. So it, lo- it looks like a two three. It's like a matchup zone though. It's- exactly. I think some people do run a two three kind of though. Like yeah, uh, yeah. The like Raptors just, they don't really switch. Right. Like, they just kind of just like sit in their zone the whole game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It depends. But then, like a lot of teams, like they'll rotate out the corner right. and corner drop. So it's kind of, yeah, it's like a like a matchup zone, like Nate said. Yeah, it's like a yeah, matchup exactly. zone. Yeah. yeah, and then five yeah. out. Um, it's not nope. really ran at all this year. No five yeah. out. No five out. <clears throat> Just not the build for it this year. Yeah. Oh, it's legend. Yeah. Hey, maybe it is. Nobody's tried it. <laughs> all yeah, right. Speaking of 
sort of speaking of Brennan, he says it's all cheese. <laughs> Uh, is that uh, a combination? <laughs> I think I think to be honest, it's there's a combination of cheese and and like real, uh, you know, basketball IQ along with 2K IQ. They're two different right. things. I think yeah, every I think sports game there's some kind of cheese. That, yeah, yeah. yeah it's just a certain it. move that PGs right. do that is just unfortunate, yeah. and then yeah, that some people call it cheese. Yeah. You got it. Oh, here we go. What's up, guys? We got, we got our first Kyle Academy Dan member. Was good. He can okay, hear okay. us right now. We'll unmute him here in a second. It's Daniel. And now we can finally, we can finally confirm. How do we say the your last right name? Here. Is it Just Masucci? Go right here. Uh, Masucci, yeah. Masucci, Masucci. all right. What's going on, got man? It. What's up? What's up, man? Good. Right. Hey, we're just talking myths and assumptions about the 2K, the 2K League. League. My guess is you probably asked, said something back in the day this is from like six months ago yeah um but for sure we're obviously open to any academy members joining into this this call this is kind of what we do just recording like this and then i edit it up for this will be a podcast um but if you have any other questions for the guys let it go man come on we're here (laughs) where where are you where are you from originally uh fort wayne fort wayne so local yeah not too far away from you i like that Good deal. You ever been to a Mad Ants game? Yeah, actually. So I did uh, sports management. It was one of my degrees at uh, Manchester University. It's up a little ways. Um, And so I worked with the Mad Ants a few times as part of, like, the program. Okay. Awesome. I was a sports management major, too. Right on, man. Not a lot of jobs out there for sport management majors, but – yeah, it's definitely tough right now. I know. I know every, a lot of other people are struggling. I, I went to college with so. Just what are the What are the general like when you go into that type of major? Like, what are you looking at to do as a career? I'm curious. Um, honestly, there's a lot of things. So, like marketing or um, event management. Um, I know like the Fort Wayne Tin Caps. A lot of people try and go work for them because they're close. Um. But there, there's a lot of different things. I personally don't – I don't work in sport management because, like I said, it was tough out there trying to find jobs. Yeah. Uh, so I, I got an accounting degree too. So I work as an accountant. Yeah, and it's pretty much like a like a business degree. So it's like – Yeah, no, it people, is. So it a, lot, is. a lot of people start in like ticket sales or anything. Yeah. Just to, work in, just to work in sports, so. Yeah, a lot of people you have to start with sales, which I also – I don't like sales. <laughs> So I was like, I'm not gonna do that. Bobby, you want to do ticket sales? No, I, I me, mean, yeah, I see. Like, I got a sports management degree, and I mean, I was just gonna get into coaching, but like, that has nothing to do with sports management. You can have any degree mm-hmm. and get into coaching. It's just about who you know. So yeah, for sure. Right. It's, it's just, cool if you can get into like one of like the big time places. Like, we had a dude from our school go uh, start working for the Detroit Pistons. Mm-hmm. And it was right before uh, Blake Griffin got traded to the Pistons. So oh, his, uh, his, his job was pretty easy once that happened. But, like, for people that have to work with, like, the smaller teams, it's yeah. not as much fun. Always got to start somewhere, though. That's true. Cause for like, sure. You, I feel like – and you guys can chime in, too. Like, you know when you look for a job and it's always wanting, like – three to five years experience and you're like how do i find my first job if i if i'm supposed to have already been working right. <laughs> that's a real that's a real thing that's a real thing that's a real thing it is it's tough it's pretty the much them saying this or... this ain't gonna be your first job <laughs> yeah that's it that's it and then come back. Just, like, that's what i was doing when i was looking at jobs i just applied anyways and interviewed and whatever because they're gonna look at my resume if they're gonna interview me it might, it might pick, you know, yeah. you never know. Never know. Never know. Yeah, roll the dice sometimes. Now we got to yeah, know, do you, play, do you play guitar? Yeah, uh, I was going to say, what do you, what do you got? Little is it just bit? decoration? Yeah, no, <laughs> it, at this point it's decoration. I, I tried to pick it up, like, I don't know, last summer or something like that. And I played it a lot for, like, three months. And then it's pretty much been sitting there since that. So I did the same thing, like, 10 years ago. And it's still, it's oh yeah, sitting, it's sitting right over here. It's still sitting. <laughs> yeah. Like good I decoration, get rid of it now. It's good decoration. Well, cool. yeah, that's what my parents told me. Is like, don't go buy one because they said you're gonna just 
play it for three months and then never touch it again. It's like a hundred bucks or something <laughs> like that. So it's not like it doesn't cost very much. And they were right, but <laughs> do any of you guys play instruments? I wish I did. Ever? I have. Yeah, I have. I played the have. piano a little bit. Okay. Yeah, little bit. Nate, 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 what you play? Yeah, I know, Bo. A little, a little, little bit, bit, bit. Just a little bit. Just a little, little bit. A little bit piano. A little bit of uh, uh, did a little orchestra early in middle school. You know, a little bit. <laughs> A little bit cello. I can see little, you doing orchestra. A little bit yeah. of cello. <laughs> locked in. I was locked in. <laughs> Yo, I was I was in middle school. I was the quarterback of the football team, team captain, and I played the flute and band. Nice. nice. There you go. Wow. wow. I played oh, wow. the drums. I played I the drums in fourth grade. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there you go. I, 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 I played the drum. I played like the drums in fourth grade. I signed up because I'm like, okay, it's gonna like, I, 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 okay, I played rock band and stuff like that. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna lock in. I'm have a whole full drum thing. set. I signed up for band, man. It was one little snare drum, man. I was so <laughs> <laughs> stunned. All right, all right. I was so stunned. I, I, I locked in a little bit on clarinet too. I, I locked, <laughs> locked in on that. I was locked. I was locked. Uh, everybody yeah. has a missing background. No, I don't. I, I did it one year. I was done. No, uh, not not me really. I just played it for fun. I can never see you play the piano, bro. There's no, no way. I, yeah, bro. There's no I way you play it a little piano. bit back in the day. A okay. little. Did you ever you take touch the, you touch the keys? It comes down. No, not lesson. I used to do the. I forgot the song. It was um. Look at wait, you. Wait, 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 no, 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 Bo, this Bo. is him playing the piano. It was one of those uh, toy piano where the, <laughs> the, the the keys light up and tell you which one to play. Okay, <laughs> but the music's just playing by itself on the piano. <laughs> low key, low key. <laughs> one of these days I'll show you, man. Nate, were you first chair? I was, yeah. Oh I was. boy, okay. I was, I was, I was, I was. I was elite. I was elite. I was elite. Not, <laughs> not an orchestra band. It bad. It bad. I locked in. When I lock in on something, Spencer. I lock in. Come on. <laughs> All right. well, so we know what you're going to fall back onto then. Yeah, it's my fallback plan. Just yeah. Case, there you go. Anything crazy happens. I don't know about when you guys are little, but so where I grew up, they made you play the recorder when you're in like second grade. A little hot cross buns. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly it. That's the go. only thing. There yeah. Recorder. So everybody played recorder where I'm from. Yeah, same. I feel like, I feel same. like that's everyone had that at some point. Yeah. Was forced <laughs> into it. Uh, okay, how yeah. about this from uh, Campion Black on YouTube? The league represents the most dedicated 2K players in the world rather than the most talented. No. Nah. That's a myth. Uh, yeah. A myth. I, don't, I don't agree with that. No, no. It's a myth, man. I, th I think there's a lot of people probably in the 2K. Got a lot of talent. That, yeah, there's a lot of talent, and there's also a lot of people that probably – uh aren't very dedicated you could say yeah yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah so. no that's just how yeah that's how it works yeah that's, I, that is true there i yeah, i bet you if you looked at the like amount of hours logged by some people that play to i mean it's just ridiculous yeah like you could pro probably like a hundred like 120 130 days played like no joke like in the course of a game so that's that's definitely how it works how about the tryout process uh, not truly being open. Uh, that's a uh, I, I disagree with that because yeah, um, it's a myth. like me last year when I made the draft pool, I was a random. So it wasn't like they like, why would they push for me um, to be when no one knew who I was? So I definitely yeah, disagree. Right. Now I didn't get drafted, but the, right. but making it to the draft through the draft process and being in the pool, I think, I mean, um, was I was a random and I got through. So yeah, I I agree with you. A lot of people make. I mean, it. There's not a lot of people like that. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people make it. Not even that they're not known. Mm -hmm. It's just you have to be known to make they actually to get, get drafted. drafted. Yeah, yeah exactly. that's where that's where it's harder. But I mean, that's the team's control. I mean, same NBA. You know, they're not gonna. They're not drafting. You can enter any. I think you can enter your name in the pool, but they're not taking someone who plays at the Y down the street um, and drop yep. twenty in a men's league. <laughs> <laughs> So something that I heard, and I don't know if this is true at all, uh, was like people will try and like press the the start button or whatever at the same time as like their buddies, like in the combine to try and get matched up uh, with yeah, buddies. Yeah, I think that works at all or no? I um, I'm sure it would work, but I don't know if people that did it. I think yeah. it could work, but not every time. Like I think right. you might get lucky one time out of ten times, and you yeah. get lucky. But I don't think it's like you hit it every time you get your teammates every play every game. I, I think it. Yeah. I think if you're on West Coast, it would work a lot easier than yeah. uh, East Coast. But yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, I know. I know people who did that, and like, I know it, like it was a big thing season one. But like, there's so many people that tried out where I don't think it's probably that successful. And there's the chance that they'll end up on the other team. Right. Yeah. So, so you might get in the same game, but there's no guarantee. Like, you might go in again uh, against each other. So. Yeah. And on, and on that note, I know that there was some like, if that happens, they're like letting each other shoot. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Put up big numbers. The yeah. outlier, the outlier games like that, the league itself can go back and look at. Like right. they'll go back oh, okay. and be like, okay, this, because all I think they're all recorded as well, like all the yeah. games. Yeah. So the league itself can go back and and pick those out. Like you're not act, like and and then remove them or potentially like ban the person, you know, from either right. moving two, on or anything like that. So two players actually got um. I don't know if y'all remember back in the day, two players got caught doing that and they, the leagues took them out. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. The other thing too is like, it's, it's so like a lot of guys are either streaming or recording or when they go through that once they're going to, and they're going to report, <coughs> et cetera, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but I mean, that's the same with any game though. Any game that's anything that's matchmaking, like you can try to do that. I mean, that's where stream snipers even come from. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Like, Stream snipers like like Swizz over here, <laughs> literally stream sniping. I did it. I did it. <laughs> you did against uh, who? You did. You, you did against. Oh wait, T Hump, not Ninja. I street, yeah, stream, yeah, same T Hump, yeah, yeah. So you know, trying to just match up at the same time and yeah, it'll work. And especially when you're in like a like a competitive mode like this, like the combine and stuff, where the pool has narrowed down. So you're not yeah. even like, we're talking about like Fortnite with a million active players or whatever, but this is, you have ten, the thousands to tens of thousands that are trying to queue up. So yeah, it's, it's something that happens, but something that the league does have like measures to protect against. Um, Tyrelius the great uh, is saying that the league is like much more strategic than people think um the people that say it's easy probably only play park and are high rep but they don't experience how difficult five versus five is i agree with that yeah i definitely agree with that agreed not a way like fact like what how do you guys like expand on that a little bit like why do you agree yeah i think like if you just watch the 2k league um in general it kind of looks a lot the same um, just from like a casual standpoint or as like a fan. So it's hard to see kind of the strategy going behind. But um, I mean, there's different ways. Every team kind of has their own strategy, whether it's a press, how they guard something, offensively plays that they run. But um, I think it's just hard to notice um, just how the yeah. game is. It's hard to like really tell like the strategy that goes into it. For sure. Yeah. And then when it comes to like the park, what do, what do you say you said that? Well, basically that like people, you know, they get, they, they play park, they're high rep, probably right. have like a right. good park record. Yeah. And yeah. they don't know that, you know, threes or twos is a lot different than fives. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. it's, it's different because, because of the decision making is the main thing when, when you're playing with five people against five people, there's, there's more moving parts, more variables on the court. You have the to make more decisions. Is, yeah. That's the big thing. When, yeah. Well, when, when it's two on two, three on three, it's more stick skill. Um, and you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of good stick skill, you know, players that play in the rec or, uh, excuse me, in the park and stage that are really, really good, but it doesn't always tra- It can, but it doesn't always translate to five v five. Yeah. And also the, something that people say a lot is the, um, the shooting. So people will be like, Oh, I can, how, how are they missing so much in the park? I green everything. It's cause the shooting is way harder as Joe yeah. he can't shoot. So it's way harder. The best shooting so the, team. Both. I don't well, know that. Yeah. If like you guys that play like retail, like, what's the difference between, like, you guys play on, like, what, 92 overall players yeah. versus, like, the guys yeah. that are playing with, like, they're yeah. maxed out 99? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, yeah, you got, so you got maxed out. Your hot, your, you know, your hot attributes zones. are probably going to be higher. You're going to have yeah. hot zones. Right. You get to pick all your badges. So, like, that, you know, sometimes on the league, you might have a couple badges that might be better. Yeah. Like, come, like, in retail, Hot Zone Hunter is one of the best shooting badges. And you don't have that in the uh, in the league, so that can kind of affect it. Um, and then, yeah, I think 
uh, just going back kind of what Jomar said about like the spacing, I think that's a huge thing. You know, you can, if you're playing park two, two V two, three V three, you can kind of just dribble anywhere. When you go pro am five V five, um, you can get pinched. Um, you got like two or three people playing a lane. So you can't just hit a and make a crazy pass every time. So it's a lot different. No openness. Yeah. No openness. <laughs> no openness. That's a huge one. Bo, you, you like openness. Yeah. <laughs> love openness. Uh-huh. Uh, so this one is uh, this one deserves two answers. All right. It deserves one answer from you guys and especially the new guys for this year. And then it deserves an answer for the vets from years past. Uh, Connor saying that you don't have much free time to yourself during the months of the league's season. I've got a feeling that's a little different this year. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the new time? guys, the new guys can go first. We'll, we'll All right. On the back end. Uh, uh, from my point of view, I disagree. I think you have a lot of free time, especially. I guess like I mean, I'm dealing with the whole um virus and stuff, so it's different than I guess in the past. But I think there's a lot of free time to do whatever you want to do. To be honest, you, to be honest. Yeah, for me, this is the most free time I've had in four years. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, this year it's a lot more yeah. free time because you're not traveling and stuff. Yeah. yeah maybe I think that's that right. takes a lot of time and, like, you're in a hotel and, like, all that stuff. Yeah. I guess you go to sleep late because, you know, you don't have to travel to an airport and stuff right, like right. that. Like, yeah. you'd be waking up at, like, 7 a.m. and, like, it's just so different now. But uh, but even with the traveling, there's still, there's still free time. There's still free no, yeah, time. yeah, of course, but, yeah. There's a lot of free time. It's not, like... You know, it's, it's the normal job. You got your normal day off when you land from the, from the plane. Like, it's just, you still got your free time. Ah, we were still practicing. And, you know, what, the next day after landing? The day of. The day I of remember landing. you told me, you yes. different. Oh, no, nah, you trip. Yeah. I mean, it also depends on the organization. I mean, let me, <laughs> let me put it that way. That's, That's a big put, one. Let me put it that way. Definitely, I think we answered that in... Yeah. A recent video definitely depends on the organization as well and, and like what all they have you doing week oh, yeah. to week yeah. this year definitely a different year uh, i think a lot more opportunity for free time for sure uh, yeah for everyone just so it's just a crazy year so i mean like yeah it, that's that's the biggest reason you know well so like speaking about like free time do you guys feel like so you work for what is it like six months yeah. As your contract yeah, essentially. Yeah. 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 So like in the other six months, do you guys feel pressure to like either practice or be streaming or like what do you do with the, all the other six months that you have off? I think everyone uh, you go ahead, Nick. Uh, no, I was just gonna say I, th- I think everyone has their own thing that they do. Some people yep. you know, some people that grind the hell out of the game nonstop, you know, stream. Some people do like a mix of the two. Some people don't play the game that much and they do other stuff. Um, I'm, I'm me personally, I'm probably somewhere in the middle. I play the game. Like if I were to put a number on it, I'd probably say like, you know, off season, you know, new, new 2k comes out. I'll probably play, you know, 25 hours a week probably which for some that might be a lot for some it's not anything so it just kind of depends yeah. on your schedule and what you like to yeah. do i also think the big the big part about that is that um if you get retained and you get not mm. uh, you're, you're retained you know if you get retained <laughs> you do have the 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 free mind of like okay like you know i can relax or whatever but if you're unretained, like I, I was, my personal experience, season one, season two, like, I, like you said, I had that pressure in the back of my, my, my mind. I was like, I have to play the game nonstop so I can yeah. try to get back in the league. I, I can't risk it and be like, okay, I'm going to chill for a couple months or go on vacation, stuff like that, because then that's that's it. I don't make the league. So um, to the people that are unretained, it's definitely a different mindset. And then the people that retain, that's where Nate, what Nate said comes up. Some are retained and still grind the game. Some don't. It's just personal preference that they don't yep. It's yep. like Nate said. There's definitely different types of people. Some people just go and work 40 hours a week yeah. after yeah. the league. They go. They say, that I got I got my league money. Now I'm <laughs> going to keep working and get even more money. And they're just going to round it up for the year. See what I'm saying? That's just, that's yeah. just how they are. Yeah. Some people go, like he said, and sit there and play a game 50 hours a week, 60 hours a week, and just – stream grind and then just i'm gonna take this six months and just play the game and not care about nothing else some people do like nate said a combination of both it just depends on depending yep. on the person yeah 
So John White says his assumptions are that the league is a great way to build the 2K brand. Also that it's probably really fulfilling to be a part of, but it takes a lot of work. Did you say that again? fulfilling? Yeah, I was going so he's saying the league, the league's a great opportunity to build like the 2K brand. Okay. Um, and also, and sort of like bridge the gap between the NBA and video games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, he also says it seems like it's very fulfilling to play on if you're competitive and love teamwork, but also could be stressful. Yeah, hundred percent. It's both. Yeah, I yeah. definitely it's agree. Both, both fulfilling and 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 also stressful too. Yeah. Yeah. Like another sports game, in my mind, it's like a roller coaster of emotions yeah. that happens in every sport. Yeah. In every locker room. How about it's not very hard to be a 2K League player? Ooh. Uh, that's a myth. Go ahead, Nate. Shoot it, shoot it. That's tough. Yeah, that's tough. He basically is saying that, you know. <laughs> no, but there's. I think, I think it's something, you know, to address because there's a lot of people that, that truly believe that. Um, I think the best way I can put it is that, uh, you know, the game of 2K, when you're playing it at a high level against the other best players in the world, it is really tough to do. And I think it's tough to understand that probably until you experience what it's like when you're playing under pressure for a lot of freaking money for your career, teammates, and like there's, you know, a lot of layers to it. And the combination of all that stuff makes it difficult along with the daily grind of getting up and, and, you know, talking about lineups, hashing out what, what the team wants to do, trying to come to an agreement on things. We've experienced that I'm sure a lot as a team. Um, so, so yeah, it, it's, it's a difficult job I would say yeah. to do in terms of the stress level now, labor wise and stuff. It's, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, you yeah. got me. And but, I think it's super yeah. difficult to get in and it's super difficult to stay in so i think that's kind of like two key things i think like once you're i mean obviously once you're in some people take it differently some people just you know i'm happy to be here you know i'm chill like nate said it's easy labor yeah collect my check like their like their goal was to make the league yeah yeah Yeah. and And then once you make it it kind of yeah so like okay for them i mean maybe that's easy um because at that point, you know, you're just kind of chilling. But, I mean, you're probably not going to be able to stay in or you're probably not going to play good. So, and it, I think, and yeah. It, yeah, go, go ahead, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay. No, I, I was just going to say, Bobby, that, that's that's like a great – because I think that's like that with a lot of things is sometimes, uh, you, you know, it, it might be not easy, but, but – um, you know, if you can accomplish a goal, it's a really big deal. But can you maintain that goal? Yeah. That's yeah. usually difficult to do that with any aspect of life. Uh, yeah. To maintain greatness is really freaking yeah. tough. In any, I don't care what you're doing. Um, so that's that's definitely that's well said, Bobby. And the I, reason why people think that it's like easy to make it or whatever, or easy to be a player, is because 2K, the way it's like made, it's. It's not the oh, hardest game to learn how to play, but it's the hardest. But I think it's really hard to get to that level, that high, high level in a five on five. But it's not hard to be. Oh, I'm good at the game. I beat all my friends. Blah blah blah. blah. It's not hard to do that if you really put in the work. If you put in the time, it's not that hard. Yeah. It's just getting to that other level. I think it's hard. Yeah, I think. Well said, yeah. I think it's hard to get to that. Like, okay, that good level, that two K league level. And it's even harder to get to that elite level because I think once yeah. you get to the 2K league, the skill gap starts becoming very small between players. And like, but that that skill gap between the elite players, I think it's hard to get where there's only so many players that stand out at each position. So I think that's yeah. where it can get even harder. Well, well so here's here's two that relate to exactly that. Sander says, uh, "Here's an honest assumption: a decent player at 2K is not far off from the pro level." The pro just has more followers on any social media. Change my mind. <laughs> Change my yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah. I think that. I think that's amazing. I think, um, like, and so I, say it. An average player compared to, say, the bottom tier two K league players. I think that's actually a big gap. But I think, like, like I said, like once you get in the like the most of the people in the league, I think that skill gap is very minimal. And besides, but there's like I think there's like the elite. And then there's like everyone else at most like positions. So. And and I'm sure there's a couple players, maybe not a lot, but there's a couple players that are not in the league that are good enough to be yes. in the league, that are good players. It's just 
and they'll make it. And, and you're and he's right. Wh- whoever asked the question, some people are just just don't have the name or don't have the the Twitter following to get drafted. That's that's a thing. I think it's a thing. But for the most part, I think the league has done a pretty good job of getting good play, the good players in. But it's it's not perfect. We it's just yeah. better. and and it depends I'm, on what you consider a decent player, like someone that just plays the game and you know goes plays the park or something, or someone that plays competitive pro am stuff like that. Um, yeah. I think even if you say you go, if you you and your pro team you go play a ranked game, um, versus you know you might say those are decent players that are just play the game. Like usually a ranked game, you like your pro team usually smacks the ranked teams, uh, nine yeah. times out of ten. So I'm 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 gonna just real quick, Spencer, play play a little devil's advocate towards that question, um, because I think all how many six of us are in here, I think we all are you know five of us we all have pretty good names i think in the 2k in terms of people respect us all as players um and and i think that's something that doesn't get said enough is that um usually your name um you know he said that uh, you're you know that's why you're in the league or whatever the case may be usually you gain that name because you put in the time and the work and you're consistent with your game and stuff like that not always the case sometimes people make a big name because they just tweet stupid stuff and their content grew whatever you want to say but <laughs> gener- I, I got my name i think most people on this team got their name because we all played the game and we've made some level of impact on the game so i think that that's that's kind of the way i think about it the other way i think about it too the way that you brought that up and Bo actually brought it up too about um, how it may affect your, uh, your draft uh, stock, if you will. The reason really is because there is no, like this league exists, but outside of that, there's no real grassroots like exactly. you have in, like you have in traditional sports In traditional sports, you've got back to middle school even, and then definitely high school, definitely college, You've got a track record of somebody, a player throughout the years that you can go back and look at. You can watch film on on all that kind of stuff. The only way for you to create that in this world is to be doing things like what Bobby was doing, where he's putting, he's literally recording his own film and putting it on YouTube and tweeting it out and being a part of the community. Building that up is creating something that becomes a, a, a lot more safe for a GM to draft because they have the, they have the scouting report right there. You've, you've helped present that to them. And so if it's between somebody who I've seen all their stuff and I know they're decent and somebody who I haven't seen a single thing on, they just have some stats because they made the combine. Yeah. You're going to have some leverage with, with the, with the following, with yeah. the content, with the film, with the streaming, with whatever. Yeah. Also, uh, you know, I I and others in the league have input on, hey, that guy's probably going to be like good for the content side on this team, right? There are different layers to this. We yeah. look at the guys. I mean, Cody's the one who does the drafting, but I'm a part of this team as well. And we talk to each other and, and, and we see interviews with guys and we see how they are, how they represent themselves on social media and that's all a part of the conversation because we're trying to determine what kind of player all encompassing not just in 2k are we drafting are we going to accept into this pretty small team right yeah and and, because that's going to translate into okay how is this season going to go on and off the court because there's more to it than just being good at 2k yeah and I think kind of like you said, like, so when you look at traditional sports, um, you know, the M- people who go to the NBA, they either play college um, or they played professional overseas or something against other pros. So, like, they're all playing against each other. They're all playing against top level players. And the teams have access to all the games, anything like they want. When it comes to 2K, like you said, like there's these amateur leagues and stuff. But at the same time, there's no um, – like what do we call it? like a spot where they can just go watch anyone play? Like you got to do it yourself. Comes like there's not like a WR vlog of every game where you can just oh I'm you know I want to go watch Bobby Buckets versus so and so versus Nate Call 
and then he can just go click it. Like you got to do it yourself where you got to post your own film, um, post it and record your own film and put it all out there to really be able to give the team like the best scouting report, it, which is just different than traditional sports where the teams can go find anything they want on you. They I think that's just kind of, yeah, they, that's kind of like the difference. And Definitely a lot of variables. That you know, how, how often do you see someone get drafted into the NBA that you have completely never heard of before, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah they're, exactly. playing, they're playing for an international team. They're on a certain stage. They're playing for a college, et cetera. It's the same th- You know, what you don't see is the guy who's in, you know, his, his YMCA league, right, <laughs> getting drafted right. to the yeah. NBA. Yeah. You don't see that. But when we're talking about this league being open and accessible – you're playing in the YMCA of 2K League, right? Yeah. But if you make enough noise and then you do qualify, because it's a, it's an open tryout, yeah, you you can make it all the way, mm. and then continue making a name for yourself along the way. Yep. But how but how about this from Jonathan? He says, "I believe that the majority of 2K League players are exploiting meta moves, like behind the background screens, etc." And, yeah. and you just gotta you just gotta abuse the game as much as you can. Like it's just. How it <laughs> Yeah, there's there's always moves that are better than others. So you're not gonna be like, okay, I'm not doing it, and then they'll pull an ass, and then you lose the game. Like right. at the end of the day, trying to win. So whatever is accessible in the game, even if if, if it's like, you know, people say it's a glitch or whatever, like you use it. Like, we, all, that. Yeah. we all see it. Pro eight, for example. Yeah, exactly. We all see it. Everybody. Imagine going into a game. You don't do pro. You don't do the through the legs move. Boom, 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 boom. And everybody yeah, else is doing bumped. it. And you get ripped yeah. and you get, and you lose the game. You're like, am I yeah. am I being dumb? Like, right. what's going on? Right, yeah. right, right. Yep. And I think, is. yeah, I think from like a viewer standpoint, like it kind of sucks, you know, because everyone, um, it was like doing the same thing. people do pro eight and everyone's doing the same thing. But from a competitor standpoint, at the end of the day, everyone can do those same moves. Um, yeah. You know, everyone can do the pro eight. So it's like, I mean, if someone is better than you at it, then doing it and using it, then, I mean, maybe yeah. you should try to get better at them. And it, it, I mean, it's not like one person can do it and the other person can't. So, you know, this was prior to the league that we really asked this question, but now we kind of know. Um, we've got Mellow Ace and then also Skillum saying that their assumption uh, for the 2K leagues that a lot of PGs won't be effective without a BP build. And that especially this year, the dribble behind the backs will be super important. Um, what's happened? What's happened? Well, the, with the BP the BP build is definitely in the league. Yeah. 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 Definitely the number one build. So yeah, yeah. And I was, I was, I was one of those. You know, it's crazy if the behind the back was actually in the league. Oh man, point cards would be so broken. It'd be insane. Yeah, that'd be. Yeah. I, I missed yeah. the behind the back. Nah, yeah, that's so, bad. So so the behind the back. Yeah, they didn't they didn't end up having no. that in the league, but. I would say, like, I mean, it's the same thing with Pro 8. Like, a lot of point guards, you know, if they took out Pro 8, there's some that would still be really good, and there's some that would probably struggle a lot. Um, how is yeah. that, like, kind of for the league? I mean, for it helps. It makes it a point guard league where almost every point guard stat-wise is putting up really good numbers. But I think, one, there's still a skill gap. And I think um, kind of like in past years that they took it out, like I think you'd see a bigger gap between point guards. Yeah, I agree. I think you've seen it in the turn with the archetype change when people had to go and play sharps and stuff. That's it was not, a whole yeah. totally different game. That's Teams were scoring in the fifties and the sixties instead of having it was. I thought it was the I most. I liked it. It was so fun. Yeah. Caleb says his assumptions are that some badges will be taken out of the league, maybe like pogo stick, etc. Any badges uh, they may think are overpowered and too RNG based. Was is pogo in the league? No. no, 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 either Hustle Hunter. They took out a couple. Oh, they took out some yeah, badges. Yeah. But one badge that is in the league that, <laughs> that shouldn't be in the league is flexible release. That is bad. Yeah. Hey, man. Lace are better than green animations. Early, yeah. Shooting early is better than us. A, a green animation, yeah. <laughs> Bro, that got to be the. I, I'm at I least stunning me on this topic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Those full bars are tough. Oh man! (laughs) There's a a real myth. There's a real myth. Is the green animation a green release? That's a yeah. That's well timed. Or did you miss and the game? Right. I I think. I think. Who do we gotta ask? Who do we gotta get? It's either like it's a it's either a perfect release that just didn't go, or it's the closest you can get to a perfect release and it not be a green. But no matter what, so that means you're the the closest white. 
or uh, error and you miss every time the closest error compared to like you can shoot an early which is you would say that's the biggest marginal error and that can go in i think that's bad right. i think i think you time it perfect and i think the game just doesn't give it to you i don't know i used to think <laughs> no that, i got that might i don't one. know I don't know. It's either that I go, I, I go, it's either that I go back and forth get. on it because I just think like, like, here's my thought process. Long oh, story man. short. Oh, I'm man. not going, I'm not, I already tweeted <laughs> go on my Twitter and see what I said about it. With uh, th- That's, that's a lot. Here's my short. Hey, momentum. Hey, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> hey let's, def- let's define this really quick. We're talking yeah. about, um, first off, guys are shooting without a bar. So we don't see right. the bar. Correct. Yeah. What happens is there's an animation after the shot that, that would happen only if you greened your yeah. shot. But in this case, there is no green, like splash or anything animating like that. Your player you the same animation and sort of celebrating. Yeah. But the shot misses, and you guys think yeah. every time, right? It misses every, 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 it misses every, time, every time. You time. Get, oh, that's a fact. Every if, time you get that animation, it's a yeah. miss. Every time you get that animation and you don't see green Correct. under your feet or whatever – it's a, it misses every time. So we already know. Get back. Get the rebound. To yeah. so the point that on the comms, yeah, everyone. Yeah. That it's like green animation. You know, it's all. You animation, know, you're going for the rebound. Literally, literally or, or getting, getting back. back. Yeah. yeah. Either either one, whatever one. Yeah. So we're leaking out. <laughs> my short condensed version of it is, okay. Number one, do I think it's user error? No, I don't think that it's user error. Number two, do I do I think that if if somebody or a team or whatever the case is, they they get more green animations than the other team. Do I think that it's luck, like bad luck? No, I don't. I I think that there's, and I, I'm not smart enough to know, but I, I do think that there's some uh, algorithm or something that works within the game of 2K that says this team, although they release X amount of shots perfect, and this team really. This team did other stuff better, so theirs are green and theirs are. I do think there's something with that. I don't think it's just bad luck, man. We just get crappy luck. We get more green animations than anybody. I don't believe in that. I don't. You can't sell me on that. You think the internet matters? I don't know. That's something that I, I, I it, it, if I'm being honest with you, no, I don't think it does. All right. I, I would if, actually. If I, if, to see all green animations calculated for every single team. Yeah, yeah. How many, what team had the most? And if, and if, for example, in our league and whoever's watching this, I'm assuming they know something or another about the 2K league. The Raptors have the best record in the league. They haven't lost a series all year. I believe they shoot the best. Their true shooting percentage is the best. And I think that their three-point shooting is the best in the league. And And does that mean that they're better shooters? No, I don't think so. But does that mean that the game rewards them more for making the correct decision possibly possibly it's 19. just a, it's just a thought it's a theory but and, we're, and pink. we're coming up with our own myth it, it, that, right. that is my own no, that's but, from the mind of nate call i have no proof we've had so many I arguments just, about I, this i, I don't yeah. believe in bad luck i believe that luck is the residue of skill and preparation that that's what right. i that's how i view luck all right, so here's a here's I'm another put that on the wall behind me. Yeah, <laughs> the point of how how bad these green animations are. So we're shooting around, right? First shot, I get a green animation, right? All right, I miss. Next time down, I come down, green it, and green machine pops up as a badge that activated for after I like. Usually, you have to green first, and then um, green animation or green machine will pop up. But this is off a of green animation miss. Um, green machine pops up, and then later on. I shoot like a normal white or whatever, miss. Then I green, and green machine does not pop up. I think yeah. I think that's a big that's deal. And, and that, right there. It's a big that's, deal. There, there, there's a, a lot of there's there's some there's something there's something, when, something wrong with, with that. There's with, something yeah, wrong there with is. That. When when you play the game for 40, 45 hours a week, you learn all these little different nuances of the game, to say mm-hmm. the least. All right, so I'm gonna do uh, yeah. one more question here before we do. Daniel, do you have anything uh, for us for the team? Did we answer mm-hmm. things for you? Uh, yeah, I mean, there was one thing that when we were talking about, there's the elite people and there's people that are decent at the game. Uh, one thing that I noticed that's like different from the 2K league and like the NBA is your guys' contracts. So there's a lot of turnover in the league because there's only a couple people retained each year, maybe a few Mm -hmm. on each team. And so I was wondering, do you think it would make more sense for the 2K league to, um 
to structure contracts more like the elite players get those three, four, five year contracts? Um, or do you think that that where the 2K league's at right now leaves too many of those good people out and there's not enough opportunity for that turnover, like that good turnover? I think um, obviously Cody's the one that manages all of, all of that side of things. Um, and so he would have the most opinion or accurate opinion on it. Um, the one thing I know is part of the reason for some of the turnover, some of the fact that like teams can't retain all these players year after year and that they are on just like one year contracts um, has to do with, I guess, the league just beginning. Mm -hmm. And having expansion teams each year uh, means that, you know, there is an expansion draft as well. So players are sort of like getting um, not retained. They're available for this expansion draft for these new teams. Then they can be retained again after that. There's a lot of stuff like that when you're talking about like trying to just grow the league and have, um, I guess, a, it's not a completely level playing field but mm -hmm. the opportunity for a team to come in and like the T-Wolves did last year, you know, win it all, even though they weren't in the league the first year. So you, I think it's, it's just a fine line. I'm sure these guys would be like, yeah, I'd like five years, <laughs> you know, like I'd yeah. like contracts like that. I think to, um, to begin with, there's just like a fine line with how much do you get? Do you start letting teams really lock down? Like, everyone that's on that team and allow them um, all, I guess, all the control in that versus trying to grow the league from a team, like number of teams standpoint mm -hmm. and allowing the players to sort of spread around in the beginning. Yeah. Each year, I can say that each year has, has like more and more things have opened up first year. There were no trades. There was, there was, you know there was nothing like that there was you basically drafted all of your players you were locked down actually in that draft you could only draft each <laughs> position yeah. and a sixth yeah. man so you couldn't even you were even locked you know to who you could <laughs> who you could pick up because if he had the if you already picked up a point guard and this other guy you like is qualified as a point guard you couldn't draft him yep. until the sixth man mm. um so the next year, season two, it was that was totally opened up. Trades opened up, um, but the number of assets you had, the number of how many players you could retain, um, this has all changed each year a little bit. Um, always getting more open and allowing teams to retain more. Um, so you know, is there like a future free agency, yeah. you know, where mm -hmm. teams can actually make the decision to pick up anyone or? Right. You know, or is there like a pool of people that they can pick up and it's larger than um, what happens if like somebody drops off the team, et cetera. Um, we'll just have to, we'll just have to see, you know, yeah. as, as a team, like as Pacers gaming, we essentially wait for that information from the league and the league comes out with that and like notifies all the teams, like here's like the new rules and here's the new guidelines around trades yep. and around retainment and all that kind of stuff. Um, cause it gets sort of redeveloped each year. Yeah. yeah. And, and a lot, say, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say like they move towards, um, like now retained players make a little bit more than the mm -hmm. rookies and stuff like that. So that's yeah. kind of like moving towards where you're more elite technically make more, yeah. but to kind of make it more like diverse and saying like where elite players are more valued um, and stuff like that. I think they'd obviously have to do like a salary cap, um, yeah, so I think like that. I think yeah, that's tough. Yeah, that's how how the tough. league pays the players. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure it's not it's not paid by the teams. It's not the yeah, league, it's not, so yeah. that's where it kind of makes it tough. And a lot of thing, something that has to do with it too is um, you can't. It's hard to tell. Like, give a guy, but let's say that you said a five year contract, but the teams right now, I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, tell me if I'm wrong, Spencer. I think they signed like a three year deal with the league. Isn't that what happened in season one? The team uh -huh. signed a three-year deal. So, like, I don't think it's possible because the team's only signed for a three-year deal. So, a player can't go five years because you don't know what a team's going to do after their contract is up if they're going to stay or leave. See what I'm saying? So, I think that's the thing right now. Yeah. And, and I think every team's a little bit different on, like, yeah. where that's at and, like, all that kind of stuff about um, just all those deadlines fall and they happen at the team and league level. 
Um, and then, yeah, the last thing that, oh, Bobby, you just, you just mentioned something, but one of, one of the differences um, with, I feel like the NBA and this league is of course right now. Yeah. What you mentioned was that the, the league pays the contracts right now. Yeah. And so, so really it's, and the fact that those contracts are set for certain levels and that's, yeah. that's, that's also opened up. Like you said, like there are different levels of contracts within the league, depending on like how long you've been in the league, where you were drafted at, at, et cetera. Yeah. Um, but basically like long story short, the league controls all of that right now. Yeah. Um, and so until that all opens up yeah. um, as, mm-hmm. as the league matures, yeah, that's kind of what we're not stuck with, but like, that's where we're at. Yeah. yeah. Okay, last one here. Last one, kind of a fun one. Um, Tony Delaney says, I don't see a lot of trash talking or toxicity in highlights. Remember, this is like highlights from season one, season two. Um, and the highlights I see covering big 2K League games and tournaments, other than getting pumped up and screaming across the room after a highlight play, does it ever get heated during games or even off the sticks? Is there any beef between teams and players <laughs> uh, different this year right we're, we're remote yeah. i don't know maybe you guys got beef maybe i mean the rooks haven't experienced that yet we got, we got, we got the rookie they, bobby and bo don't know what the stage life is about no nah, but but I'm mid-game but, i'm fa- i'm facetiming yeah. our opponent talking yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no it, it, def- it definitely happens uh spencer it i mean you saw it last year with a few few different players are you know i won't say their names but it got pretty, pretty physical and uh you know yeah viral yeah it got a little viral so yeah it's it's 2k right i mean everyone playing for a lot of money you get ticked off and you want to go through your controller or somebody on the other team now people are even doing it virtually like people go on periscope <laughs> people go on periscope down yeah. and start arguing crazy they need an I mean, outlet to get out there their i ain't gonna say no names but it was getting yeah. feisty the other day it's yeah. crazy yeah i yeah. didn't see it i, I, I didn't see it either, I, didn't but I heard it neither but uh, that's what i heard uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, get, it gets feisty sometimes at the end of the day it, it, it's, it's a video game and, and we know like we can't really like do any fighting because it's gonna be like it's over like that so the most fight you're gonna see is social media. That's where the real fight is. Yeah, exactly. Other than that, it's not. It's nothing. Nothing else. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little different because you know basketball, NBA. It's a physical game. Guys, it's are physical. That's what I'm saying. They're literally bumping into each other, right? That can yeah. instigate like a, a an altercation. That push right off there. or whatever. Yeah. yeah, but you're even on the stage. You're kind of Separated. across the room. You're separate. <laughs> you're in your own seat. There's not a whole lot of like. Instant, a whole lot happening bumping yeah. in and, and stuff like that there are um, some people that get loud though no that's for yeah, sure that's that's what you have you have your voice right yeah all right hey daniel i appreciate you hopping on here appreciate uh you, daniel yeah, i appreciate you joining yeah. hey we appreciate you being a cat yeah, member for cool. like ever as well he's got yeah, the full no the full logo the full uh loyalty badge logo um that's on the right. channel and yeah, he is an Academy member. So we're going to try to do these more often. And I think the podcast is a good opportunity uh, because we essentially, you know, due to our situation right now, we record <laughs> this remotely. Every guy's sort of in their own room. Yep. And uh, w- what that allows us to do is, is give our Academy members a link. And uh, that's exactly what we did today. And, and Daniel hopped in here. So I wasn't sure how many or if anyone we'd have join. Um, but it was cool having you around. Yeah, definitely was. If you're not sure. a member already, once again, you know, join buttons down below. And academy members have certain even higher level perks than than the rookies, the rookie members. Uh, so stay tuned to the community tab for all of that kind of information. That's where we can drop it. Um, and then I don't know, you know, some people have their notifications turned on, and you'll get emails and stuff when we send things to specific. Um, levels of, of membership. All right, you guys, that is it. I'm sorry, Nate, we ran over a little bit. It was an hour <laughs> long. We'll Come blame on, Jomar because he is always 
always Joe Mart's late. Always, always late. Always, always late. Five minutes. It was Every five time, minutes. though. Every no, time. You are, though. You are. You, 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 are you are consistently In late. Bad. It's <laughs> bad. I oversleep uh, the, like, over the alarm too often. It's I can't bad. do it. I just it's sleep bad. hard, bro. People can be outside just you gotta put seven alarms in a row. Yeah, you gotta yeah, put one for like ten minutes before, then five minutes. Yeah, yeah. or start going to bed earlier. I just, You're professional. <laughs> if, they, if you can't get up, come on, man. You're professional. Mars, we I need I need better out of you, Joma. The next hey, podcast yeah. is gonna be about Joma's hey, man. sleep schedule. And hey, man. To get up. Keep it coming, man. I can I can hang it. You can take you can hang it. Take the blows. All right, I give you. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Joma's even setting alarms after. The, the podcast started. We heard one go off at like one. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a couple, you know. And so, yeah. Instead of instead of early, he sets him late. Like that's bad. That's terrible. Like you're like you're already late. Like <laughs> only five minutes. It's only five minutes. It's I'm just saying, like you should set. You should try sending them a little earlier so you can be on time. And so you're like, all right, I'm, I have I'm them earlier, I'm, Bobby. Right, I, I, just be, I just don't. Uh, hear him. You set one at one. And you're like, all right, if I don't wake up on time, one o five will work. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I wake up to the best alarm is Bobby screaming. <laughs> when yeah, you're already hey, late, you're already late. <laughs> I almost texted you, but I could kept auto correcting. I was like, oh, if you texted me, I was gonna still be sleeping. <laughs> you ain't waking me up. I was gonna ask if you were up and if you weren't gonna respond. Well, that told me. All right, guys, that's it for this Pacers Gaming podcast presented by Salesforce. Once again, link in the description if you want to go check them out. Um, a lot of career opportunities and different things. Um, also, they create some great marketing products if. Uh, you need something like that. Hit them up in the description. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for being here, guys. Thanks for being here, Daniel. Yeah. See y'all in the next one.